Immortals is the best team in NA right now. If we want to make a statement about how strong CLG is, this is our chance. I don't think a lot of people see like CLG as like the reigning champions anymore because of like, how different the team is now. I think because they replaced a lot of their players, they feel like they're also a new team, so they don't really have any pressures. They're going to be pretty confident too. In game three, though, it's our spotlight showdown with Counter Logic Gaming squaring off against the big bad Immortals. I think Stixay will do really well against Wild Turtle. I think what he brings to the team is just like that raw mechanical skill. When Turtle was on TSM, I didn't think he was actually that good. Since he joined Immortals, he looks a lot better, but I can still beat him. I think I have more trust in my teammates right now, and it really allows me to do really aggressive plays and get away with it. His low from Immortals, but Moon gets caught out by Rain over and Hootie, and a double kill yet again for Wild Turtle. You got Poe Belter up against his former team, the likes of CLG. I feel like really confident versus Poe Belter. Any player, when they're kicked off a team and they're playing against their former teammates, there's a little bit of that rivalry. I still think he's a really good player, and it's going to be a really great match. Yeah, I mean, of course I want to win. <laughs>
shining qualities really got taken away, I would say. Global pressure is still there. We'll see how it works out. We're going to wait and see what the pro players let us know. Next up on the docket, Frost Queen claim nerf to the cooldown that uh, you can use the active, as well as Athene's and Morello's cost reduction. What do we expect to see change in terms of itemization maybe for mid laners? Yeah, I think it'll be pretty interesting to see uh, how the pro players adapt to this. I mean, Frost Queen's claim is such a great scouting tool. There's a lot of safety there. You know, even if you want to move up to Ward, you can pop that active before, find out where the jungler is if they're nearby. Um, but it's 150 cheaper for Morellos, 100 down on Athenes as well. Uh, Dark Seal is also cheaper. So it'll be interesting to see if there's some different combinations that we are seeing in the mid lane. Yeah, I think a lot of times when we'd see Frost Queens or on someone like Lux or something, you would see Frost Queens and Morellonomicon. So even mm -hmm. though Frost Queens has kind of gotten a little bit worse, Morellonomicon has gotten better. So definitely more Morellonomicon and Athenes, and still a little bit of Frost Queens, because even though it's on a longer cooldown, the scouting is still absurdly powerful. Yeah, in your experience, having watched uh, pro players and yourself been fiddling around with this patch, do you find that the nerf to the active is enough to kind of pull Frost Queen out of the meta for mid laners as well as supports and sometimes even a top laner? Um, I know Jensen's all over the new items, Morello's, and um, as for supports for getting Frost Queens, I feel like um, the active's still an amazing active. Like you said, you can go ward just press the active, go into the jungle and be completely safe. So I feel like it's still a great item. Yeah, the benefit of the active outweighing the yeah. small nerf to the cooldown there. Next up, new new changes. We've seen, we saw, I think we all saw the Reddit, <laughs> uh, like 2.2 second, you know, uh, ice, ice blast spams. Yeah. Uh, but is that enough to pull Nunu into the meta jet? Probably not. Mm -hmm. I really like jungling a lot of Nunu personally, but uh, whether you're maxing your consume or maxing your ice blast, it's very different play styles. Mm -hmm. I actually think the max consume Nunu got a lot better. One of the lesser talked about changes on Nunu was the fact that the slow at level one is up from 20% to 40%, which is huge if you're maxing consume and trying to be a counter jungling beast. But with junglers like Graves and Elise currently in the game, I don't see a place for a strong counter jungle Nunu. It'd be interesting to see. I mean, with the preseason, there was the introduction of Tracker's Blade, you know, and, and not having to necessarily buy that Sight Stone for the early vision makes it a lot safer for Nunu to go for those invades. Um, but we haven't really seen much Nunu jungle since the preseason, so it'll be interesting to see if players with this buff and trackers are able to kind of utilize that. I remember when that topic came up uh, with our team, we were having a discussion, and I was like, the damage got nerfed, but Rush was like, but the cooldown, but the damage, but the cooldown. So it was kind of back and forth. <laughs> was, there, was there a solution <laughs> arrived at? Was there a conclusion? That I don't either... remember Rush's Nunu being particularly good. <laughs> flash, ice, it. Flash, yeah. flash Ice Ball, I remember that. <laughs> <The mechanics laughs> He's got to play sick. aggressive. He's got one play style. It's yeah. go in. I yeah. love it. All right, well, next up, a few rounds of nerfs. Tom Kench, Mundo, and Elise. Is there one, in your opinion, Bunny Fufu, -Foo, that hits harder than the, than the rest? Um, I know the Tom Kench one is going to definitely hit top lane pretty hard. As for support, he kind of fell off like right after Worlds, I would say. But honestly, like no other champ does what Tom does. So in the future, we might see him come back as the meta changes. But that's all I can think of right now. So the relevance of his kit might keep him in the meta. However, he is... It is a significant nerf. I mean, we're yeah. looking at, you know, reduction to his just overall bullying and lane on yeah. top of his scaling, right? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the matchups we've been seeing lately, we've seen a lot of uh, TK versus Fiora, and that's where something where the scaling comes in a lot. Like, 2% less dam HP damage for uh, his ultimate passive. When you get to the late game, it's actually going to matter quite a bit against a champion like Fiora, where Tom Kench is already kind of struggling. Uh, and as far as early game, I mean, the, the stacks lasting two seconds less does kind of uh, limit your opportunities to get those Ws off of Defensively, and people can kind of play around that a bit more. We're already seeing Tom Kench top lane not being particularly effective in late game team fights, yeah. and that's just going to be exacerbated by these nerfs. So if we do see him, it's going to have to be in a composition that really takes advantage of his unique style, maybe even in the things that he's playing against, like a Vi, or if we ever see that, things that he really needs to be able to gobble up to save from projectile damages. Right, Mundo, increased cooldown on his ultimate for the earlier portions of the game might make him a little bit more abusable in yeah. lane, but ultimately saving five seconds on that cooldown late game is just going to prove all that much more annoying five when you're trying ago. to burn through the health of that front line. Looking over to Elise, I think probably the most significant nerfs there being to her movement speed in both forms by five, so just less mobility around the yeah. map might relieve some of that early pressure that we see from Elise jungles. Yeah, I think Elise is definitely like top three jungler, I would say, so 
I mean, if you want to nerf a champion, you might as well hit their move speed. Right. It does feel like one of those things where Elise is always going to be relevant, <laughs> but hitting that move speed, just kind of a flat nerf to the champion. With these changes in mind, though, let's take a look at the current state of the league. We saw a lot of fast games last week and a lot of inconsistency among specific teams' performances. TSM kind of want to put the spotlight on them for a moment. They had a very solid win against Cloud9, but then the loss to Energy with that zillion composition for GBM along with the poppy from impact yeah I mean they've, they've had a lot of up and downs you know we know that they have the star power they have the individual talent to succeed but they just haven't been able to string together the wins yet I mean they've been one and one every week uh, they, they have moments of brilliance and moments where they kind of look like eh, they, they still have some things to work out yeah, opinion on uh, TSM as, I mean, most teams probably would have been thrown. I don't know how you guys would have dealt with that zillion mid. Is it kind of one of those situations where you're willing to be more forgivable with the team's performance given that they couldn't have predicted a zillion poppy comp to come at them? Yeah, like if you've never played it in scrims, you're not really expecting anything. And we've kind of messed with it in the past a little bit, so we kind of had an idea of what they were going to do. But as for their success, um, it's probably just the players on TSM taking longer to come together and for Immortals their playstyles just fit perfectly so that's why the success is coming right away. Well you just you just mentioned it Immortals they are the opposing picture of consistency two sub 20 minute games and I mean they just look to be unstoppable at 6-0 currently. Yeah the speed at which they win some of the time and how cleanly they take care of the bottom tier teams is something we've never really seen before even in just the short few games but I also think it's a little bit premature to talk about an under defeated season because they've had two very close games already in their first six. They came about against energy, could have swung either way if those initiations would have gone awry early because they were getting poked down very hard. And the game against TSM was very back and forth. So they are currently undefeated, but they're only one third of the way through and it'll be very hard to make an undefeated run. Yeah, and I mean, they are a new team, but Hooney and Raidover coming over from having, you know, that, that undefeated regular season uh, with Fnatic, I think they bring like a very cohesive core to the team. And I think that's something that the rest of the team kind of play around. Uh, like I said, I think the main thing is just their play styles is like aggressive winning lanes in all three lanes. Put that on top of a really good aggressive jungler is just going to turn into pre-20 minute games, I guess. Yeah, it always feels good when all three of your lanes are winning as a jungler. <laughs> that you just, you feel empowered to do it whatever so it is. You know? Yeah, you, best, you always look you're good buying. as a jungler. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's because of me. It's because <laughs> of me, I promise. Well, with that news, let's see how the teams are faring in the standings. You should know who's in first place by now. It's Immortals with six straight wins. Tied for second place, though, we've got Counter Logic Gaming and Energy Esports. In the middle of the pack, there are four teams tied for fourth. How convenient. And at the bottom of the ladder, Team Dignitas is sitting one win ahead of ninth place, Renegades and Echo Fox. Now, Liquid and TSM, or rather, Liquid and Team Dignitas will have first dibs on another win in our first match of the day, followed by Cloud9 versus Renegades. Closing out the day, we have Energy Esports taking on Team Impulse just after TSM versus Echo Fox. And in our third game of the day, former teammates Huhi and Poe Belter will face off for our match of the week, Counter Logic Gaming versus Immortals and this is where I come back to you and your point about the undefeated season Jat. if we were to look at teams that have the capability of taking down Immortals at this stage of the season yep. CLG would be one of the ones we'd look to totally last week Immortals had a fairly easy run playing against Renegades and Echo Fox this week they're going to be tested obviously with CLG and Liquid so the grudge match makes it even more interesting. They're trying to stay undefeated. Hooney and Raidover trying to keep their undefeated streak in regular season games alive. And I want to see who he versus Poe Belter because that is the guy who he's the whole reason Poe Belter's even on Immortals instead of CLG. Yeah, Bunny, how does CLG, what, what is their biggest advantage in this game to come away with a victory against Immortals? Um, they're probably going to take the energy strat versus TSM, with, which would be hit them with a surprise. Because okay. I think the biggest thing is um, like people said in the past, the hardest thing to do is stay on top because everyone's nitpicking at your strategies and looking at you the most. Hmm. So for them, it's just going to be, I think they'll dominate for a few more weeks, but maybe it'll change down the line. All eyes on Immortals. We'll see. Teams are planning and scheming to take them down. CLG might be the first to do it. Changing gears for just a minute, we're excited to announce the venue for our upcoming 2016 Spring Finals. <laughs> Stakes World of League of Legends is heading to Vegas, baby. This April 16th and 17th, the Mandalay Bay Events Center will play host to two days of NALCS action. But unlike most trips to Vegas, what happens there won't stay there because our teams will be battling for glory and the championship title. Keep an eye on the LOL Esports page for ticket information so you can reserve your ringside seat. And on that bombshell, we're going to check over with the guys at the Caster Desk to prepare us for the